First of all, we will measure the frequency response of an amplifier. So first input impedance, then output impedance, and the gain of the amplifier itself. Then we are looking at the audio crossover. We measure the transfer function of the crossover, and we compare the measurements through a very simple splice simulation. Then we take the loudspeaker itself, and we measure the impedance of a tweeter and of a mid-range speaker. So now it's time to hear, and we do start with the first topic. I start with the input impedance. First of all, input impedance is uh, typically measured at one kilohertz. The values have to be above 10 kilo ohms and are typically between 10 kilo ohms and 100 kilo ohms. There are two possible measurement setups for these measurements. On the one hand, there's the one port measurement, which is recommended for impedances from uh, half ohm till 10 kilo ohms, maybe 20 kilo ohms. So if your impedances reach the 100k ohm value, you have to use a high impedance bridge. This impedance bridge you can measure up to a few mega ohm impedances. Um, the output impedance. There you have to look at these outputs of the amplifier. As you can see on the right side on the picture, there are 4 ohm, 8 ohms, and 16 ohms output impedances declared. But these declared impedances aren't the real impedances of this amplifier. These are just values for the recommendation for the recommended loudspeakers. So the 4 ohm input output of the amplifier have to connect a 4 ohm loudspeaker or even higher impedances. Just you don't, you're not allowed to um, connect loudspeakers with lower impedances. These impedances, real impedances, are between 20 milli ohms and 2 ohms, and also measured at 1 kilohertz. There is no impedance matching, means that the output of the impedance is not the same like the impedance of the amplifier output and there's just a bridging impedance. It means that the output of the amplifier always smaller has a smaller value than the impedance of the loudspeaker. And there are also two measurement setups. First of all the output impedance impedance one port. It's the easiest way to measure it and goes down to half an ohm, as I said before. And if the values are lower, approximately 20 milli ohms, which be, would be optimum, you have to use the shunt through method. This method you can use from 1 milli ohm to 10 ohm. Yeah, and in the shunt through method, actually that's a gain measurement. So you need okay. to convert the gain <coughs> result that the body provides you to an impedance value. And it's, well, actually it's an easy formula, an easy equation, and we have prepared an Excel sheet for that. So in case you're interested in measuring very low impedance values, please contact us. We can provide you the Excel sheet that does the conversion from the gain measurement to the impedance values for you. Okay, so let's go on. Very important, the if you measure the output impedance, please be sure that the input isn't any signal. So shorten the input of the amplifier, or just do not connect anything to it. So the body 100 can't be destroyed. Yeah. So let's start with the first measurement. Yeah, and I bring on the camera on the screen such that you can see how Tobias connects the Bode 100. As I said before in on the slides slide before, we used the one port measurement method since this amplifier, the impedances of this amplifier are around one ohms, or the input impedance is at 10 kilo ohms, so you can use the one port. Yeah. Which you can see in the measurement now. 
actually the title of this presentation is a little bit misleading. We said characterization of high-end uh, audio devices. This device is uh, for sure not a high-end audio device, but however, uh, it does the job to be measured. And uh, the, yeah, Tobias has now connected the output of the body to the input of the amplifier and the amplifier is switched on. Yes. yes. So we will now start the body analyzer suite. Actually already running from a previous session, I press on file new such that we start from scratch. And the first thing that we will see is a lot of noise since the body is coming up with an yeah, there's a gain measurement, and now nothing is connected to channel one or channel two, so we are not set up for a gain measurement. I need to switch the measurement from gain to impedance. In addition, the frequency range is not the one that I'm interested in. We are interested in the audible frequency range, so that is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Yeah, so let's go to 100 kilohertz. So it's a little bit above. And also the sleep model is set to logarithmic. And then we use uh, the full output power of the body 100 since this gives us a better uh, channel. So more signal on the channels as you can see on the right and lower side. So that, that gives a better signal to noise ratio. And now I click on uh, optimize and then set here to ah, mm -hmm. format we will set to magnitude directly not decibel and then the maximum to uh, 50 kilo ohm and sorry, 30 kilo ohm and now we can see the input impedance of the amplifier over frequency so at 20 hertz it's roughly 13.5 kilo ohms and at 20 kilohertz that's 10 point something kilo ohms are you happy with that well the value is not exact not really because I ex expected even higher uh, impedances, but with this amplifier, we knew it, and it isn't a high-end amplifier. You can expect uh, values around the 10 kilo ohms. Okay. In the beginning, we mentioned that the that the one-part reflection method is uh, actually not suitable for impedance values above 10 kilo ohms. However, it works. We just uh, the results are not the, the best. You generally uh, fight with noise in that range. We can improve the measurement further by doing a one-port calibration to remove the influence of the cable. So I suggest that we do now uh, uh, open short and load calibration at the end of the cable. Yes, let's do. So we connect nothing just for the open calibration. Yeah, so I run the uh, user calibration now and I say open. Okay, that's done. Next we connect a short connector to the end of our BNC cable. Yeah, and I press some short here. Last but not least, uh, this zone loads. And I press on load. So that gives us the possibility to shift the, uh, the measurement plane from the front panel of the body 100 to the end of the cable <coughs> and gives us a more precise result. So I say OK. And Tobias, can you please connect the amplifier again? Of course. So connect it again. Yes, perfect. And the measurement is running again. And uh, okay, then just remove that 20, 20 k. So now it shows 13.8 kilo ohms and 10.5 kilo ohms. So the measurement uh, is quite similar to before, some hundred ohms more now after the calibration. Well, that was input impedance. Next thing will be the output impedance. Output impedance. Since we already have done the calibration, we do, don't have to do it again. We just connect 
this simple self-made CNC2 wire connector to connect the output. Um, since there are three different outputs, we'll start with the 4 ohm output. And measurement. Yeah, the measurement shows me at 20 hertz I have an impedance of uh, 630 milliohms and at 20 kilohertz 4.4 ohms. I store that to the memory such that we can also have a look at the other output. Yes, just connect 8 ohms to the measurement again. Yeah. Okay, the 8 ohm output shows it even more impedance. That's now nearly one ohm at 20 hertz and at 20 kilohertz. It's the same, yeah. the same. Okay, I just stored it also in the memory. And uh, can you please connect the last ohm? Once output? more, the 16 ohm output. Okay. Oh, it's nearly two ohms. Nearly two ohms. Well, is this something we did expect or is it a good result? We expected it, but not a good result at all. With a good high-end amplifier, you expect 20 to 50 milli, 20 to 100 milliohms impedance over the whole frequency range. Okay. Good. So let's continue with the presentation, and the next topic will be the gain of the amplifier. And there we have to explain a little bit about the gain measurement of the Bode 100. The Bode 100 offers uh, generally two different methods to measure gain. And the first one is to use the internal reference of the Bode 100. This means that the receiver one picks up the internal source voltage. However, the internal source voltage does not necessarily need to be the same as the output voltage since we have a 50 ohm source resistor and yeah, there can be a voltage drop at the internal 50 ohm source. So if there is a voltage drop, then we might introduce an error to the measurement. This measurement actually is designed to measure 50 ohm system. So we could also terminate channel 2 with 50 ohms. Then we would measure the S2 on the transmission parameter. Well, if we are not measuring in a 50 ohm system, then we can use the external reference of the body 100. This means that the receiver 1 will be connected to the channel 1 input and we can really pick up the voltage that is going into the amplifier and compare it to the voltage that comes out of the amplifier. And this is then the real gain. We tried to uh, estimate the error that we will do if we use the internal re reference. And it's a simple voltage divider. We have the 50 ohms from our source. Then we have the impedance of the device on the test. In our case, we said it's above 10 kilohertz. And uh, the impedance of the body is 50 ohms. So the error that we will make if we, use, if we use the internal voltage instead of really picking it up at the input of the amplifier will be very, little, very small. It's a below a percent. And we said, this is OK for us. So we will now use the internal reference to measure the gain of the amplifier. Since we have less cables, then there are only two cables instead of three. What we'll measure afterwards, that's first the 3 dB bandwidth. We take the 10 kilohertz as our reference point, and then we say what's 3 dB left and 3 dB right of that. And uh, the next thing will be the gain range of the audio amplifier. So we measure the minimum gain the audio amplifier is doing and the maximum gain, and then we get the gain range. We do that at uh, 10 kilohertz, for example. And as a last point, we check the influence of the equalizer. So we will see the frequency response of the equalizer. So we can increase the bus, uh, the low frequencies, we can increase the mid frequencies or the high frequencies or damp them. We will see that later on what frequencies are really affected by the bus, mid, or travel control. Yeah, so now let's head to the real measurement. 
I bring on the camera again, just that we see what Tobias is doing. So let's just start new. First of all, we have to do a through calibration. Therefore, we started with connecting the output of the body 100 to the channel 2. These are the two channels we are using for the measurement. Connect it together and do a through calibration. Okay, I bring on the body 100. And the first thing I need to do is I need to set measurement to gain again because we were in the impedance measurement. However, now we want to use the gain measurement. I get an overload because I use the full output power of the body. That's too much in this case. So I reduce it here to 0 dV, dVm, and we get a gain of 2 now. So it's connected through and we get the gain of 2. That equals 6 dB in dB words. The reason is that we have not terminated the channel 2 with 50 ohms. And actually we don't want to do that in that measurement because otherwise the amplifier uh, would drive the 50 ohm of our channel 2 and it could heat up or even burn if we use very high amplification. So we leave the uh, 50 ohm at channel 2 open, so we use it at 1 mega ohm. However, then the, uh, the gain is not, uh, the calculation of the gain doesn't doesn't work out anymore, so we get the gain of 2 or uh, 6 dB in dB world, and, but we can remove this 6 dB, 6 dB offset by performing a through calibration with 1 mega on channel 2, and then we will have a correct result, and we get the gain of the amplifier if we insert it afterwards. So I do through calibration now, and now we know this is now 0 dB, the cable, no attenuation, no gain, and if we place the amplifier now in between, then we will see the gain the amplifier adds. So let's bring on the camera again. We start like before, connect the output of the body 100 to the input of the amplifier. We use the aux input and channel 2 of the body 100 to the output of the amplifier. Therefore, we use the 4 ohms output since it was the best on our output measurement, output impedance measurement. Okay. The amplifier is connected. I switch off the cursors and we do already see the frequency response of the amplifier. <coughs> it's a mid volume, so 50% volume. Yes, exactly. And yes. all the Equalizers are set to zero. Yes. Okay, so that's the somehow natural response of this amplifier. And so now try to find the 3 dB bandwidth. So I set cursor 1 to 10 kilohertz. Set 10 kilohertz now. And then I say cursor 2 minus 3 dB of that. And that adds approximately 40 hertz. And the upper frequency limit, the Upper corner frequency is not visible in that case. That's above 100 kilohertz. But actually, we don't care about things above 20. We can't hear it. Yeah, we can't hear it, so it doesn't. Okay, what else do you want to mention? Um, let's do the gain range measurement. Okay, so we store, store that. Do we, do we need to store it? No. Uh, no, you don't have to store it. Okay. We start with the minimum. Uh, just for the minimum, we use 10% volume. volume. You can see the 90% gain range. It should be 10%, yeah. Okay. So now we have uh, attenuation of minus 14 dB at 10 kilohertz in this case. And I store that now to memory, so should we compare it to the maximum? Amplification. Okay. So we have to choose a lower level of the body 100 output level. Okay. Come to minimum minus 27. And now we can go up to 100% volume. Okay. So now we have an, uh, a gain of 20 dB at maximum. We had 
minus 14 at minimum. So 43. 34. 34, sorry. 34. 34. Gain range. So what I can see now is some noise on the curve. So at uh, 50 hertz and at 150, here we have some some noise. Um, this is because the signal is very small. We could fight that a little bit by increasing the signal. So let's, for example, go to 20 dBm, put a little bit more signal in, and then the noise should be less. <coughs> yeah, it got a little already a little bit less. I could use even more signal. But you can see that, oh, that's not too much, so I have an overload at channel 2. Minus 15 I wanted to enter, actually. Yeah, and now we have, again, a thin curve without noise on it. A uh, se second method to fight the noise would be to change the receiver bandwidth to make the measurement slower, more narrow bands, more filtering, or to change the attenuators at the channel, so I could also use 10 dB of attenuation here, but I will run in an overload now. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Well, and we will now show the equalizer implant. Equalizer implant. So can you please go back to 50% volume? Start with 50%. So I can set the level back to 0 dBm. And store now this curve with zero equalizer. And now you can turn on the equalizer. First of all, we started with the base equalizer settings, which is at this, uh, at this amplifier is named 150 hertz. Okay, I do get an Instead overload. Base. You put too much, so I have to reduce. My output power to the maximum <laughs> base equalizer. Okay, let's have a look where this peak now appears. All that's exactly at 158 hertz. So, pretty good. Pretty good. The mm, mid range equalizer is 1 kilohertz. So, I set back the base equalizer and this time I minimize the equalizer, mid-range equalizer, which is the one kilohertz. And again, now we have a dip at around one kilohertz. So change a little bit and let the mid-range equalizer set to minus 12 minimum and put the tweeter Equalize it to maximum. Can be pretty funny shapes of the curve. In this case, you wouldn't hear any. If you set the bass too low, you couldn't hear any bass or lower frequencies. Just a high tweeter noise. Okay. In case you want to see something else, please post it. We can. Uh, do the measurement that you want, but for now, we'll now, if no questions appear, we will continue with the presentation. <coughs> yes, the next part of our presentation is the audio crossover. This audio crossover is a simple combination of LC high and LC low passes. You can see in the picture the low pass for the mid range and the high pass for the tweeter. And if they are work together perfectly, all the low frequencies um, above approximately 5 to 6 kilohertz go to the mid-range and all the higher frequencies to the tweeter. Now the calibration setup. On the left hand side you can see the audio crossover and the connection. Um, it's very important that both channels, all the channels you need for the measurement, are connected on the same point on the PCB. And for sure, you have to connect the output of the body 100 at the same 
at the same point, so you have signal for the calibration. The measurement setups, of course, there are two. One for the, for the mid-range, you connect the output of the Bode 100 to the input of the loudspeaker. Input of the loudspeaker is also the input of the crossover. And channel one also directly connects to the input of the loudspeaker. And if you use the channel one for the external reference, we do not have 50 ohm output impedance of the Bode 100. Channel two is connected parallel to the mid-range loudspeaker. For the tweeter, it's exactly the same. Just connect the channel two to the tweeter. So let's do the measurements. Now I bring on the camera again. And this time we have to change our setup a little bit. We will use one-to-one -one oscilloscope probes. So we use standard oscilloscope probes. You could also use a ten-to-one probe or even just pigtails or BNC cables. Uh, we just use the probes because they are easier to connect on the circuit board. And well, it doesn't matter if you use one-to-one -one or ten-to-one. You will simply lose a little bit signal to noise if you use ten-to-one. Hope you can see everything on the camera. Yes, I see. Yes. We start to connect the output of the body 100. Connectors. To the input of the loudspeaker. Here. So. And channel 1 and channel 2, the same place on the PCB, since there isn't enough space for these two probes, I connect it on the PCB. There's just the cable in between. Ground to the ground point. So everything is connected for the through calibration. Okay, let's check if we need a through calibration. First, I check my connection setup, my device setup, <coughs> and I see that it's still set to internal reference, but since we now use two probes, we use both channels, we have to switch on the external reference. The input impedance of both channels is still one mega ohm, that's fine, since we use the oscilloscope probe. I say OK here, and then I disable my memory, so say I want to see only the data curve, the current measured curve, and it's a perfect flat 0 dB line. So actually, we don't need any calibration. Exactly. So let's go over to the first measurement. And therefore, we connect channel 2 of the body 100 to the mid-range loudspeaker. It's just also a connection on the PCB, which is this one. So connect it. Okay, here we are. So that's now the transfer function of the low pass filter for the mid range speaker. So it has a resonance frequency here, an LC filter with a resonance at 4.8 kilohertz. So everything above, let's say, 6 kilohertz is cut off. Yeah. So I store that to the memory now. And then Measure the I will connect the high pass. High pass for the tweeter. So this one. Oh, I think it's connected. Let's yeah, see if the measurement works. Yes, here it is. I say data and memory. Right here. And now we see both curves as a filter. So in the dashed line, the low pass filter for the mid range and the solid line the high pass filter for the tweeter. Are you happy with that result, Tobias? More or less. I think uh, the only problem which is is the high resonance for a high pass filter. Okay, so if we would like to improve that we could add some damping on the high pass filter. 
However, the frequencies, the cutoff frequencies match quite good, and we will uh, have a look at the sum of these two transfer functions in our presentation. Switch to the presentation. So for this, this is a comparison between the sim uh, simulation and the measurement of sun. For the measurement, for the simulation, I choose standard. No, just start with the filter components. Therefore, I unsolder it, the components on my crossover, audio crossover, and put in all the values into the simulation, even the parasitics, ESR, for example, and the loudspeakers are just on the standard 4 and 8 ohms resistors. So there aren't uh, like the real ones with the non-linearities of the frequency. <clears throat> So um, this is the comparison from the simulation, comparison of the measurement of simulation of the travel path. As you can see, the red line is the simulation and the blue line is the measurement. Um, I have to say the measurement is done with uh, another crossover. Um, as you can see, there isn't such a high resonance. And it should be the same, but since they are handmade, they aren't the same. So you did also wind the clothes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, self winded, so there are differences. Mid range path, driver path also pretty good, matches the simulation pretty well. And there's also a simulation where I added the travel and the mid-range path. This comparison is done in Excel. I um, copied trace data to Excel and compare it there with the LC spy simulation. If you want to know more about these measurements, I, there is an um, application node on our web page and don't have to write down the links. You can see look afterwards at this presentation, which will be available on our webpage as a PDF. Yeah, so now let's step into the next topic, the loudspeaker impedance. As you mentioned before already, uh, you modeled the loudspeaker as a 4-ohm or 8-ohm resistor, but uh, we know that this is not exactly the case for all frequencies. So we are gonna measure the loudspeaker impedance now. Typically, they are between two and 16 ohms. So standard values are four, four and, eight ohms. and eight ohms. And they are normally specified at one kilohertz. Or, what did you say? Or some manufacturers choose the lowest value of the frequency. So on the oh. left-hand side, you can see the measurement setup. This time, the one pulse reflection method fits perfectly. And on the right hand side, a typical result that shows the impedance over frequency. And we are now going to do that live. So, can this bring on the camera? The BS has already disconnected the probes from the Bode 100. And we will now connect a different speaker since the speaker in this, uh, in this loudspeaker is soldered to the crossover so that we don't destroy everything. Just take another speaker. <coughs> So we start with a tweeter. I get the right good connection. So yes, yes. connected. You can hear the tweet already. And bring on the body, analyze the tweet. And now I have to switch back to an impedance measurement. So I say measurement impedance here. And I say data only. I don't need the memory in this case. And go back. Here is zero dBm, and say optimize here, and format. I choose magnitude to directly read the impedance in ohms, and then I go to 20 hertz here, and we have an impedance value of 7.3 ohms, and there is a huge resonance at uh, 
1.6.5 kilohertz. There is a message coming. Please set Y scale to log. We can do that and optimize again. Let's go from 1 ohm to 100 ohm. So now it's log scale, and we can see that we have a resistive behavior first, then we have a resonance, and then it continues to be inductive at the spot, 10 kilohertz. So I store that now to memory and to data and memory, and we do now connect a mid-range or even a low-range speaker. Yes. Yep. And by the way, this speaker had an 8 ohm marking, no? Yes, it's an 8 ohm marking, and Measurement at one kilohertz was approximately 7.8, I yeah. think. So it's pretty good. So the loudspeaker is connected. Go back to the body analyzer suite. And now you can see that this speaker is totally different the other one. We still have approximately 8 ohms at 20 hertz and however the resonance is much lower, it's at uh, 60 hertz, close to 60 hertz and it gets inductive pretty early since I assume it has more winding inside. Yes. Okay. Mm, Anything else on this? I don't think no, so. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> if there are questions, feel <coughs> free to post them. Otherwise, we continue with our presentation now. Don't need the camera at the moment. Okay. So that was the live measurement already. <laughs> <laughs> and as a summary, we would like to mention that the Bode 100 has a perfect frequency domain for audio system measurements, and it allows to assess the quality of the audio system you can measure gain and impedance with one single device, and it's very easy to measure transfer functions with the body. And you can also show the impedance of the speakers. Now well, that was it from our side. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Thank you very much for listening. We will stay in the line for another five minutes to answer questions that appear, but we'll stop the recording now so that you can ask your questions. Thank you very much.